How you doing, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Colin. My name is Colin Anglesfield, and I've got my coffee mug here, but I'm actually drinking tea tonight uh, because I've got a little bit of a stuffed up nose and uh, just trying to support my health and wellness. Uh, but uh, thank you for being here. We are going to be chatting all about books today, tonight, wherever you are at. Uh, I just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, you are not going to be disappointed with what I'm going to be sharing with you today and what my guest is going to be sharing with you about the world of book writing, book publishing, and basically getting your story out there. Um, she is my book publisher, and she helped me write my book, Agile Artist. She helped me come up with the title of my book. And as you can see back here, this is the name of her company right here, Networlding Publishing. And she just beyond being a book publisher and a author herself and a speaker, she's got a ton of experience. Um, so just want to let you guys know that while you are on the show here, feel free to type in your comments. If you have questions that you want to be asking my guest over the next hour or so, I uh, would love to entertain those and support you guys in whatever it is that you want to know about book writing and book publishing, because this show Coffee with, Col with Colin is all about supporting you in fulfilling on all your dreams and your goals because as much as I love acting, it is my passion. It is something that I have been doing for the past 25 years. I also am very passionate about supporting other people and fulfilling on their goals and their dreams. And a lot of what I write about in my book, Agile Artist, has to do with the things that I've learned to overcome my own challenges, my own obstacles, my fear of being in front of audiences and uh, it's funny because my guest who's going to be on here tonight, um, and I'll just let her let you guys know, her name is Melissa Wilson. Um, when I first met Melissa, interesting story, I was at a point in my life, this was about six, five, six years ago, and I had decided to leave Hollywood. I'd gotten to a place in my life where I had accomplished, you know, being up on, uh, being on some of the biggest TV shows and movies that you could possibly think of as a professional actor. So I had reached that certain point in my life where I was like, all right, I, I, I made it. You know, I've done, I've done movies with Kate Hudson and Sylvester Stallone and Gary Oldman, and I'd been grinding and working so hard to become a professional working actor. And I got there. It was amazing. And I still love it to this day. However, I think there's something about what happens to us at a certain point in our lives where even though things may be going well, and from the outside, it may, you know, people are looking in and see our lives and we've got, you know, it seems like maybe a great family and we've, you know, we're healthy and we're making money, whatever. Sometimes deep inside, we feel like there's still something that we haven't quite fulfilled on in our life. And that's where I got to that point in my life, um, like I said, about five, six years ago. And I just found myself in Los Angeles and I felt like I was now ready to take that next leap or step up into that next level of my life. And for me, that was very intriguing, but it was also very terrifying because I didn't know what that looked like. I'd always been attracted to Tony Robbins and I always kind of resonated with hearing motivational speakers like him and um, and uh, like Mel Robbins and Dean Graciosi and just a lot, you know, a lot of these motivational speakers where I just, it, it just kind of, you know, I always liked that inspiration and um, I always kind of had this idea of maybe doing that myself, but for me, getting up in front of on a stage and speaking in front of people was always something that I struggled with. And it's funny because some people will be like, well, you're an actor, Colin. How could you struggle with that sort of thing? I mean, you train and this is what you do. And there's a difference between going to acting class, learning lines, and then showing up on a set and basically connecting with another actor. You are on stage and you're basically with another actor or another group of actors and you're working as a together as a team you've got your director you've got your producers so you're basically a part of a system or a collection of uh, a group of people all all like advocating or working towards the same thing but getting up in front of a group of people whether that's to give a presentation at work or to give a presentation at school um, or to get up in front of an audience and just share about who you are whenever i would have to give uh, interviews for the movies that I was doing, even if it was just me in front of the camera and the interviewer, because I didn't have a script and people were asking questions to me, I always would get nervous and 
be afraid that I was going to say the wrong thing or say something stupid. And this is where I really started to be curious and be interested in learning how to become a better speaker, a better interviewer, uh, a better interviewee, and just learn some of the techniques and strategies of just how to become more effective and more confident in front of the camera and in front of audiences. And so I've been working on this for quite a few years now, and I've learned quite a few things. And that's what I share in my book, Agile Artist. And I've got my courses and things that I'm doing. I'm sure you guys all know about my Inspire course and my Beyond Impact course, where I support people in teaching them some of the strategies and techniques that professional actors we learn in acting classes to become better communicators, to understand the dynamics of <clears throat> more interesting communication. We talk about subtext and we talk about objective. We talk about intention. We talk about tactics. We talk about frames for conversations. And once you start to learn some of this stuff, it completely changes the game with the way in which you show up in your life and the way in which you interact with people and the way you're able to just show up and be your authentic self. Cause that's something I struggled with. Uh, for many years, I just kind of hid behind the characters that I was playing on my TV shows and my movies. And I, whenever it came to, you know, me being Colin on a, like a, a an interview on a local news show or radio show, I would always just get so nervous because I was afraid that, you know, I just wasn't going to be articulate or whatever. And so a lot of this has to do with becoming just uh, more proficient by practicing. It's not just understanding the techniques, but it's actually putting them into practice. And when I decided to leave Los Angeles um, to go back to Chicago, um, I decided to go back because I felt like I needed a break from Los Angeles. LA is a great place. Um, it can be very intense and it can definitely make you, uh, at least it made me feel that um, I just, you know, in a lot of ways, wasn't matching up to a lot of the other actors and uh, other people out there. And so I, I just needed to take a break. So I decided to go back to Chicago. I wasn't sure what that exactly looked like. I was starting to get into real estate. And once I got back to Chicago, this is the funny thing about what the universe does. When you follow your heart and when you just listen to your instincts, there's something about how what I like to think and kind of look at it from the perspective of when you follow your authentic purpose or when you connect to what that is. And for me, it was, I'm, I'm interested in making a bigger impact on the world, whether that's some sort of motivational speaking or, or uh, coaching or teaching, or I didn't know what that was. I just knew that I just had this feeling that I needed to leave LA to go back to Chicago. And when you listen to your instincts and when you listen to your heart and when you listen to your soul, amazing things happen where packed up my U-Haul, got to Chicago. And within a few weeks of me going to Chicago, uh, I got invited to speak at a, it's basically a networking event um, where this guy, he was a uh, basically a social media manager for LinkedIn and he helped people connect uh, and grow their, their social media presence. And he asked me to come and speak at this LinkedIn networking conference and so I got up there and I started telling him my story about Hollywood and 9-11 and my cancer journey. And uh, after the uh, after speaking, this lovely, kind, amazing, incredible woman came up to me who we have the fortune of having here tonight on Coffee with Colin. And there was just something very intriguing about her where she there was just something about the way in which she presented herself in the sense that she was... She had this very kind and loving and supportive energy. And she just started asking me questions. Our first thing she said was, Colin, you have a very interesting story. It's great to meet you. And uh, she asked me, have I ever thought about writing a book? And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> I mean, maybe like when I'm 80 years old or something, like if I'm lucky enough to live that long. Um, but I hadn't really even thought about it. I was like, what would I write about? What would, why would even people want to read my story? And she started to uh, just chat with me a little bit about uh, just reiterating that everyone has a story and everyone has something to offer. And the more I thought about it, the more I was interested in maybe exploring what this looked like. And so I called her up and she was at the grocery store and she was kind enough to actually just take my call. And this is what's great about Melissa is that no matter 
what she's doing or no, no matter what's going on in, in your life or her life, she always made me feel like she was there for me more than just someone who wanted to help me write a book, but someone who was there for me, uh, who cared about me and what matters to me. And even to this day, five years later, uh, I still consider her one of my, my best friends and colleagues. And she's always incredibly supportive about what I'm up to. And I'm so excited to introduce you guys to her tonight because I know each and every one of you has something to offer. And if a book is something that you want to put that out there into the world, into the universe, Melissa is the person that you're going to want to talk to to help support you in this process. And we're going to be chatting about what that process looks like. Um, so feel free to write in with your questions if you have anything that you want to ask Melissa. Would love to uh, share with her anything that you may have regarding what it looks like to, to write a book and um, just everything from the uh, the nuts and bolts of the book writing process and the publish publishing process, everything to um, all the way to just the whole mental aspect of why would anyone give a crap about what I have to say? And she was always very supportive along the way. And we'll tell you um, what my process was like working with her. Uh, but without further ado, I just want to give you a little bit of background about Melissa um, and that she is a, uh, she's been basically in the book publishing and the book authoring space for, for quite some time. Um, she works with a ton of entrepreneurs, CEOs. She's helped them write their books. Um, she's taught in networking events. She has uh, quite a few best-selling books herself. She has a book that was number 10 on Amazon for an entire year. Um, and a lot of what her background is, is all about networking. And so we're, uh, we're going to be chatting about what that looks like. And uh, she's helped 168 thought leaders write, publish, and successfully launch their books. And she's very involved with uh, the whole marketing process. And uh, she currently lives in Chicago, and she was living just right down the street from where I used to live in Chicago. And she's just an overall amazing, lovely human being. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Miss Melissa Wilson. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's great to be here and what a an introduction. It's like you could just, you know, professionally do that for everyone and everyone would be better off. Great to be here. Well, you are welcome and thank you for taking the time to share your your expertise and your knowledge about the process of book writing. Um, mm -hmm. So just to, to start off, um, can you just share with us uh, how you got into the whole world of book writing, book publishing? Uh, was this something that you, from a very early age, were interested in, or was it something you got into later on in life? Well, I loved to read. At, at the age of five, I was reading books, you know, that a nine-year-old would read. And I started journaling, I want to say, even before I was a teen, I want to say maybe nine. And I just would write uh, and write and write and then read. And then I took every writing class there was when I went to college in undergraduate school, graduate, uh, master's work in English and writing and taught writing on the college level and then law. And I got to do all kinds of writing in the is as uh, in law school. And I even wrote for the first African American federal district court judge. I used to write her briefs, but don't, you know, that was a long time ago. So I can't be arrested for that now. And she um, she was wonderful. And I also um, worked for Heart Marks doing trademark research and writing, worked for a criminal law attorney um, writing work for the small business administration writing. I mean, I was, it was just crazy, all the options. But once I finished law school, I was at a big law firm and I had two little children and they really needed me. And I thought, I'm going to become an entrepreneur like my dad. We actually grew up with my dad's flora shop connected to our house. Mm -hmm. And so we always had to be on, you know, run the business as part of the family. And I thought, oh, I'll become an entrepreneur. And that's when I started 
in Chicago, um, getting involved. I created the first, the first company was Service Showcase, which was like um, Angie's List. And I enjoyed that for about three or four years. But then I got housed in with an accounting firm and they had a training arm. And I thought, I'm going to see if I can write a book and actually use these um, accountants as guinea pigs. And so it was great. At that point? At the, and I wasn't an accountant, but the, I was in as a consultant. And, and how old were you at this time? Oh, um, I want to say maybe about, I was under 30, probably about 29, 28. Okay. Yeah. So I had the undergrad, graduate, law school, and I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do because entrepreneurship, my line is entrepreneurship is where our creativity lies and it's where our hope is. Mm -hmm. And so I kept that, that concept. And so my first book was a resource book for entrepreneurs and believe it or not, anyone who wants to write this, no one's ever followed this up because Starting a business, like how to start a business in Chicago, that's essentially what it was. And it got me so much attention because it's that concept of grow where you're planted. And we had a women's business advocate for the state of Illinois. At that time, women only owned 17% uh, of small businesses. So I got to do a lot in Chicago. My first publisher was Dearborn that became Kaplan. And then... The second book is when I wrote my first networking book. And at that time, there were only maybe six people who were networking experts. And now everyone's in social media. Everyone's an expert. But I rode that curve around and I've had six different publishers, um, 10 books uh, that I wrote, you know, I published traditionally. And my one strategy, which I tell all my authors is, when you write a book, if you do, you do want to have a, you know, like come up with a clever way to do it. I looked at Ken Blanchard, who moved my cheese and the one minute networker. And I thought, oh, look what he's doing. He's partnering with other executives. So that's mm -hmm. what I did. I started partnering with executives coming out with books. So I had more than, you know, just me. And it was great. It really worked out well. And I... I focused a lot on networking and that was awesome. And eventually I became, uh, and so this is another thing I did. I wrote um, about Chicago and leadership and then Crane Chicago Business picked that up, had me come and talk and then wrote an article on me, how I was the best networker in Chicago. Wow. So that was helpful. Um, so the ideas here are, you know, think in a very clever way. And there's still lots of opportunity that people, opportunities people aren't thinking of. One of them is focus on where you are right now and support your city. You know, write about that in, you know, a clever way. Like I did leadership in Chicago. And I used to do all kinds of fun things like um, at, I'm trying to remember the name of the restaurant, you know, that's... Uh, um, it's got all these caricatures there. Do you know which one I mean? Um, and it's, it's got at least 350, but I used to do contests for people, you know, like tell me how many uh, caricatures there are in this restaurant. And if someone guessed close, the one who guessed closest, I give a $50 gift certificate. I mean, I just kept coming up with ways to connect and ways to build. And then it was all about writing and blogging and I kept going. And then um, it was, it was a lot of fun. And I ended up meeting um, a woman on the board at the university of Chicago because I was well networked and that got me into net worlding and Jocelyn Carter Miller, who actually in 2000 became their first chief marketing officer, which is crazy to have it take that long for Motorola to do that. But I interviewed her and I asked her this question. If you find somebody who's really got a lot going on and they're way up there, ask them, what's one thing you haven't done that you'd like to do? Mm -hmm. And they usually say something like, I want to write a book. So I talked to my publisher, Jocelyn and I wrote a book together 
And she had challenged Chris Galvin as a black female to open up Motorola in Latin America. She got that opportunity. And when the book came out, Networlding, she was promoted to be the first chief marketing officer. So it just kept working the tool of a book, the partnerships. So I blended networking and and partnering and building relationships. And believe it or not, everyone, I am an introvert. And if you put me in a room with people I don't know, I'll melt down. (laughs) And it still happens. So I'm that person that really appreciated. And that's why, Colin, I will help everyone I possibly can, because I know how it's, it's really hard for some people, especially, you know, when they're out there on their own. Yeah. But if you care about something and it matters to you and what you helped me do was really think about the events in my life, how they could be positively impactful on other people. I started to get out of my own head and realize that, wow, I mean, you know, no matter where you are at in life, you've all, you've learned something to get to where you are at that someone who hasn't quite gone there could probably benefit from. And uh, I really like what you said about just finding a clever way of exploring an opportunity. Um, And I think what you helped me see that I had a unique way of uh, talking about overcoming challenges and having my perspective from Hollywood and, and, uh, and just help me create the structure for what the chapters would look like. And just so anyone out there who is interested, Melissa does help people write books. So if you're interested in uh, contacting, contacting her, um, she does basically, we did this little kind of discovery call and you had, uh, you asked me about, think about maybe five to seven moments or uh, experiences in my life that were the most profound that I feel you that you've said that maybe I could expound on and talk about. And I really started to think about, yeah, no, I mean, 9-11 and my cancer journey and just overcoming oh. obstacles to go out to Hollywood and pursue this crazy dream. And what we did was you had me um, create this outline and then we scheduled every Saturday, we would schedule a phone call. And you would then, let's say for the 9-11 chapter, um, you would get on and you started asking me questions. So Colin, where were you that morning? What was that like? And the whole time that you were asking me these questions, you were recording the phone call. And we would talk for about, gosh, maybe hour and a half to two hours. And then afterwards, you would email me. You would have that phone call transcribed. And then I would get an email with all of my words transcribed onto this Google doc. So they were my words. And then it was my job to go in and basically edit, rearrange, move, uh, pull in some site uh, citations from Ted talks or whatever that I felt like could support or substantiate what I wanted to talk about. And then I would give those to you. You would help edit them. You helped me rearrange the chapters and then, what was really cool was with the book cover, uh-huh. you ran a contest on, was it 99 designs? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are a couple of designers that, um, that I use again and again. And, and certainly because you have the manifestation um, workshop too, it's like, by the way, anybody, it's the best. Um, I've seen a lot. I've helped 168 authors and that, that guidebook's going to be incredible. So absolutely, um, it it just, Colin, you were the one author out of the 168 that took everything and turned it into the ultimate platform. And, and so because you, you saw what I could see, the vision of what was possible for you, and you just deployed very quickly everything. It's, you know, I can use you as an example because most people take a lot longer. And I like to say there um, that they are brave leaders, but terrified authors. And that's what I keep finding. 
I, and like you said, C-level in Fortune 500 companies, chief CEOs, CFOs, people who take books to Davos that I've worked on. I mean, it's amazing where they feel that maybe they can't do it. And my most wonderful thing is, you know, it's not to me, it's not as much about being an accountability partner. It's about being a passion partner. It's like, mm. I love my authors and I'm there and, you know, in it to win it. And it gets me jazzed. And now I'm like, you're building the community here, which is so wonderful because, you know, you can help people, but the best thing is when they help each other and you get to help them. And that's what I've done once the authors go through the process um, and what I try to do, and I'm crazy, I have to admit that and on the front end, and you know this, Colin, I always try to work with the author's budgets. And I truly, truly, and I shouldn't put this out there, but I just channel what maybe it's going to work, how it's going to be a win-win. Mm -hmm. So everyone's different. And I'm I'm really honored. I got asked by Gotham Ghost Writers um, to come and speak on marketing, and they usually make between a hundred to a million on ghost writing. <laughs> so it, my 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 costs are nowhere near there. Know what I want them to be, um, because I want authors to get their work out, and I want them to be successful. And once we get the book done. And then I've started a support group for the authors and they're really starting to help one another. But my vision is that I'd have a couple hundred in the group, because if you think about it, you've you've seen that that picture of and I don't know if it's called stone soup or what, but everybody's got those big spoons and they show you what hell looks like. That's what they're trying to feed themselves. Heaven is where they're feeding each other. My authors were going into our third year they're really starting to help one another. But my vision is more than a hundred of them. And if everyone helped each other, having a hundred reviews on LinkedIn, not LinkedIn, sorry, on, um, on Amazon will make all the difference. You know, there's so much lift you can get from that. So that's my big goal is build the community. And, and that's the least amount I, <laughs> I charge. Um, because I want authors to realize, you know, their vision through their writing and their relationships. Yes, yes, I totally can attest to that. Um, and yeah, some of the people who here are on the chat, I, we are reading your comments. So if you have any questions for Melissa, feel free to type in. Um, and Michelle Goldstein wrote, uh, was she saying that the Palm restaurant, was that the restaurant you were talking about with the pictures and the characters? Um, oh, I know it was Petarino's, ah, but okay. the, the poem restaurant, I'm like, where is that? Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so anyone out there who is thinking about writing a book, you've done quite a few discovery calls and I've actually, uh, have introduced you to some of the people in yes. my Inspire community who are interested in writing books. And you've actually, you're in the process of helping some people write books right now. Yes. Um, for anyone out there who you, who's interested or the people that you do meet with, um, what would you say is maybe the biggest hurdle um, that people are facing when they talk to you about wanting to write a book, but not sure how it would look like or if people would even care? What do you tell them? It's, it's a really good question. Um, the, to me, if one person cares, that's enough. I've done a lot of give back and I got to, when I was teaching and doing networking events, I got to help Scholarship Chicago. And their research showed these were kids from underserved communities who were given scholarships to, um, to college. And what they found through their research was that if just one person cared, that would make all the difference. So, I, you know, there's so much to do and there's still room just when you think, you know, there are too many people out there, there really aren't like poetry books are becoming um, in well, growing and growing and growing. Um, there's, I have on the networking site, I have over 850 blog posts 
and I'm always updating them. And I have, I have all kinds of freebies, like an ebook, um, 33 ways not to screw up thought becoming a thought leader. Um, and I also have two guidebooks, one on autobiographies, which is more starting from, you know, your sequentially, you know, from your beginning to where you are now, whereas memoir, it's interesting, Colin, I would call your book like a cross between it. Um, but in memoir, it's more a theme that the author is um, really uh, honing in on like resilience or leadership or, you know, tenacity, something like that. But memoirs, it, you know, some of my research is showing that those are really in demand now. And mm. what's happening in trends is in hybrid publishing, and I'm a hybrid publisher, I don't sell my imprint, I gift it. And so I've got the net worlding imprint, but <clears throat> I think I told you, Colin, and I think you liked it. I'm also um, starting a new print called Grow Well Publishing, which is about going from um, prior to being some type of thought leader, but using the book as a tool. And I got to be part of Seth Godin, who his street team, when he reinvented publishing in 2008. And there were 70 of us he chose to help him reinvent publishing. And we brought out eight books mm -hmm. and they sold a quarter of a million, quarter of a million copies. And mm -hmm. I learned so much. It was like getting an MBA in, in writing. So, you know, I know enough to know there's a path for people. And, and so, you know, it's, it's just to me exploring it and, and truly one of the things um, a co-author of mine who I also had a contest for the best networkers in the world, which I'm going to do again now um, but the person I met there, Billy Dexter, we've been together since 2002 and every year we'd meet once a year and he'd say he was going to write his book. It wasn't until 2015 when we actually got together, but I had to walk to the Willis tower back and forth, uh, every other week because he was so busy as a partner at Hydric and struggles, the executive search firm, but I didn't give up, took us two years. And Billy and I now have a podcast that are on the net that's on the net worlding site too. So to me, the community is, you know, like yours, it's about loving and caring and sharing and giving. And there aren't very many communities that are that, <clears throat> you know, connected and, and warm. Yeah. So that's, it's such an opportunity now. And that's why I'm a big fan of yours. Well, I, I'm a big fan of yours as well, because I, I would say you are a heart centered publisher and author. And uh, we've got a couple of questions here. Um, <clears throat> Gina Marie Henderson is asking any experience with writing children's books. Yes. Um, there actually also is a site called write for kids and it's the number four. That's where I would go for those. Not that I haven't written children's books and, um, that I would rather have you be like in the thick of it with, with experts. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great place to go. And they, they're very, very reasonable. And it's like, you know, the deeper community for children's books, but with AI and I, I have five AI programs. It's, and by the way, it's really about outlining, using it as a tool for research and outlining, but you're better off writing your own from your heart, but using it and it can help you. But there's so many ways to uh, take advantage of it. But um, with what's coming, the ability to actually with, you know, design, create those pages. That's where I think the fun is because children's books, you know, um, can be very, very whimsical. And I think if you're not an artist, but can use tools for artistry. It's it could be a lot of fun there too. And Cheyenne Lindemuth is asking: Are book tours mandatory, or now with everything being digital, will podcasts right. achieve the same reach? 
Yes, yes, it does. Um, there's there's so many ways, you know, to get on podcasts and you don't need to do the book tour. Now, eventually, if you do something live, like, you know, if you're in a, a place where there's not, it's you're not snowed in, um, sure, you know, live does add to it, but augment it with live and you can do an awful lot online. And I read a really good article. I'm a big fan of Rob Eager, who's created a number of New York Times bestsellers. And I started last year focusing on email. And, and what he said today was all the research is showing use social media to get email subscribers. And in that case, the thing to give them is, you know, create something like my guidebooks are maybe you know, the memoir and the autobiography are maybe 12, 15 pages. But once I had my search engine optimization tech um, person helping me, he said, this is where you rank one to five, you know, in the top of the um, top of the fold for autobiography and memoir, and you have 10 different or 12 different articles on each one, why don't you combine them and, and use that for a sign up? And my numbers jump from 50 a month to 150, and my open rates from 45 to 62% um, percent open rate. So it shows you, you know, if you take the time and look at the path, it's um, Seth Godin calls it permission marketing. And mm -hmm. that's really what you want to do. You want to build your following and it's the best way to do it. So I'm not about putting a lot of money out. I'm about more about being clever and there's no question. You could call it relationship marketing. You could call it networking or you could call it net worlding building mutually beneficial relationships to create transformational opportunities, which I did and, and now give away. If anybody ever wants my guidebook, it's called The Great Exchange. And you can email me and I will send you the link to that. But I'm not pushy. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't judge. I, I'm not like, oh, that person should have signed up for this or that. My goal is to be there when you need me and help you as I can and make it fair and equitable. And you did just that for me and supporting me along my journey because there were times we started writing my book. It was like around October uh, of 2000 or yeah, 2018. And then I finished it probably around, <laughs> you wanted me to have it done by March. And mm -hmm. once I got started, I just, I felt like, um, I didn't want, I guess I had more to say than I guess I realized. And yeah. uh, you always just kept me on track and just giving me my, my deadlines to make sure that I would shoot for those deadlines. And we actually overshot. Um, but just <clears throat> in terms of what you were telling me, the best times to release a book are in the springtime and the fall. Um, yes. Tell us a little bit more about why that is. Well, you know, in the in the springtime before summer, summer people are traveling. Um, now, a romantic comedy, if you're writing novels, could hit in the summer. But it's you know getting the attention before people are running out there with their children, going here, hither and thither. Um, that's why usually that's a better time. And January could be too for those people. You know, finances, exercising, you know, weight loss, whatever, fitness um, could be January. And then September, if you're writing something in the business, you know, in a, the business area, nonfiction, et cetera, then you're looking at people getting serious, you know, about building or entrepreneurship. Um, that's a good time, too. And the other thing that's happening is there are so many unique books that are coming out now and people don't realize what they can do with books. Like um, you, you have a guidebook now and guidebooks can be incredibly lucrative. Um, there are things to note about journals, but of course still a lot of people are doing journals and it's um, 
it's the the goal is and i'm taking this from one of my favorite marketers mark schaefer who uh he wants to be called the mr rogers of marketing and i took a branding class with him he's a friend and he believes that anyone can jump in in one of the areas where there are a lot of books and do something very different so that's what's a fun challenge you know that like again i'm going to say it once more and i do not get paid for this but that manifestation guidebook i just keep saying to to colin please give me one please i didn't give me one it is amazing and i've done guidebooks and i really wanted to be in the course and i feel you know, but I but I want everybody to like be there and form the community, you know, so if I show up, it's not like I don't want to make it all about me, but I'm going to get in that class someday. It's so, so amazing. Yeah, you definitely have to. What Melissa is referring to is my 90 day manifestation playbook. And ever since Agile Artist came out, you've been holding the space for my playbook to be an actual real thing. And right. it's only taken uh, four years now, and it's finally um, almost done. I'm going to be releasing it January 17th with the uh, introduction of my next Inspire course. Uh, so anyone who's interested in actually having a three-month container where if you're interested in writing a book, this is a great opportunity for you to jump in to be able to create the goals and the milestones to be able to achieve along the way. And Melissa... You're welcome to jump in over the next three months. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, to just kind of give us some some inspiration and motivation along the way. Um, but as far as uh, you were talking about, for anyone who's um, writing a book, as far as the marketing goes, um, yeah. you taught me the process and you mentioned it, creating your email list. So yeah. getting like a program like a, like a MailChimp or something like that where- Yeah, I would, I would probably get Mailer Light and then- you know, ratchet it up to convert kit later, okay. which could be, you know, a number of years. But the other thing is I'm such a big fan of Substack, as you know. And the mm -hmm. reason I love it is because it's free. You can build your email list. You get to keep all your emails. And on the navigation bar, I mean, everything's set in there for you to pop in pictures, to podcast, push the podcast button and read it, which and you know, Colin, I, I was there when you you um, audioed your book in my podcast studio. And I just remember, you know, the it, it was really cool because you were you were being the actor speaking and I felt like I was right there, like the landscape of the what was in, you know, in your life was opening up. There's nothing like audioing a book. And so if you take it in small bites. Um, and I call it baking the marketing in, you know, slowly letting people know what you're doing. And I think Substack offers that. And it's also got a community where you can throw out ideas like um, I'm going to call my podcast or not my podcast, but my um, Substack this. What do you think? And all the writers weigh in. And the thing to note is if you do have a, a website it doesn't mean you can't have the Substack because it's a different audience. And so what I love about it is, and I believe what they're saying, they're, they're coming up with a new algorithm that can help people go viral. And I'm like, I'll be the first one there, you know, to find it out and then tell other people about it. But um, I just love it. And, you know, if you wonder who's coaching the coach, I, hi I hired a coach um, there, who's a New York Times bestselling author, and she's amazing. Her name's Sarah Fay, S A R A H F A Y. And uh, I usually send my authors over, like, go have an hour with her, you know, for a half hour for $150. There's no one like her, and she's like lightness itself. So, you know, to get that much wisdom in such a short period of time in 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I've been watching so many things over the years, like what works. And and then if I blend Mark with Sarah, Mark Schaefer, he's got a great book called Known, which shows you how to become known within 18 months. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, Mark Schaefer, the, the Mr. Rogers of marketing. And 
it's, you know, it's like get in the right community, get with the right coach, and it's the best investment you'll ever make. And that if somebody asked me what changed my life, it mm -hmm. was the book Networking is Dead, which I spent 90000 on the marketing. So so nobody else had to because I don't this, believe in that. This was yeah. the book you wrote, right? I wrote, yeah. Mm -hmm. And nope. it was great. You know, and one of the best strategies there, um, because you end up and this is what authors do when you go with the publishers anyway, they usually want you or your organization, if you come from a company to buy X number of books, but then you got to do something with them. Well, I did that and I ended up giving the books to uh, boards of directors and ended up with about a hundred thousand dollars worth of um, business at that time, which I did, I was involved with teaching networking. And what I realized with boards of directors is, especially nonprofit boards, those people are really busy, but they have that idea, that concept of, oh, I can take the time, you know, because getting back is so important. So it ends up being a really nice strategy, but, you don't have to spend ninety thousand dollars at all, and you know, with the good thing about Amazon is you can get author copies up to nine hundred and ninety nine copies, and you know, have fun giving away your books. And, and so, yeah, and you, I'm I'm thinking of you, Colin, with with um, books coming out. That could be the case, you know, because most people have a not for profit that they really admire, and mm -hmm. you know, find out the who's on the board um and a lot of cities have a list of who's on you know what board so that could be a nice strategy and so the platform you mentioned it's called substack.com is that what it's called yes. correct okay so i just typed it into the chat here so you guys can check that out for any interested or budding authors out there uh and we have a question here in terms of uh um, going the route of self-publishing compared yeah. to trying to get a traditional publisher to pick you up. What would yeah. you say is some advice, um, obviously with Amazon yeah. KDP, which is the route that we went to where you were talking about hybrid publishing, where you are a hybrid publisher and that you're not a normal publishing house where a normal publishing house will take you on, help you, you know, with the editing and then put it out there. And then the author may get like, five to 10% of the royalties. Right. And, and right. And you're, you're getting realistically, unless, you know, you're, you're bringing out a best selling book. Um, you're not getting marketing support. You're getting a minimal amount of marketing support. So to become savvy in marketing, it's still all about content. And so one of the things with the authors that I recommend is as you're writing the book, be writing other, you know, behind the scenes and all kinds of different things that you can be doing, again, to bake the marketing in so you build your presence out there and, you know, even get on podcast in advance, you know, if you are on the path of becoming an expert and can talk about it. And even if you had, just like I have the memoir guide book the, or the, you know, the I don't call it a booklet, but you usually would call it a, a guidebook, but it's very small. And mm -hmm. and but you can create something and use that as a tool to set the stage for you when you're done with your book. You know, you know, when you think about it, the numbers go up, you know, it's more than seven to ten times that you have to hear something. But the idea of having the book cover. And talking about the book all the way through, it's hard for authors to do that, but it's it can make such a big difference. And you can do it in a very unassuming way. You're not trying to push anything. But that's important because to I call it the trust continuum, to know, like, and trust you and collapse that sales cycle, if you will, mm -hmm. that takes time, but not that much. And Mark would say, you know, to become known, it's once a week for 18 weeks. And you mm -hmm. have to, and, and uh, I know Dawn's on here, I think. One of my authors, I text her and I say, you got to come on here. And 
I call it winning Wednesdays, you know, post on or wisdom Wednesdays, actually winning wisdom Wednesdays would be even better. So, you know, if, if anyone does that here and you let me know, I'll come promote you because it's what I love to do. And we should be doing that for each other and, and helping each other. There's no reason why we shouldn't. Michelle Goldstein is asking, uh, do you help writers with writing scripts for TV or movies or just for books? Now, don't you do that? <laughs> um, um, I, yeah. I'm laughing. I, <laughs> I was going to say, come on. You know, uh, yeah. When I was getting my master's in English, um, I actually had um, a play that I wrote. And my teacher said, this could be one of the great plays of our time. It was, you know, Effective Gamma Rays on Man in the Moon Marigolds was the Broadway show. Um, but it was sad. It was about a little dog who died. And, and it, 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 it really was a special story. But that's my, my, I would have to say that's it, you know. So talk to Colin. But I'm happy to help with marketing or whatever, give you some time to say, here's what I think if it, if it matters to you, but it would, it would be just a, a gift, which awesome. I don't mind giving gifts away. Yeah. Uh, Shannon Graff is, is an author who I'm helping um, with her book that she's currently uh, finished. Mm -hmm. We're about to start putting together some marketing for it. She's asking what are one to two pieces of advice for budding authors looking to begin building community? Mm. Um, well, you already have community here. So one of the things to do is to find even just one person, um, start with one who's a good networker, I mean, if you contact me, I can introduce you to someone. And I, my line is the introduction is the new referral. So, um, you know, I'm on LinkedIn with 13,000 connections, 99.9% .9 connected with me. And I used to be the coach on six figure jobs for 10 years. So I helped 3000 individuals learn LinkedIn, got to present to LinkedIn when they only had 80 people, which was like going to Oz. That was the coolest thing ever. But the question to ask, since our brains are neural networks, you would say, once I know you, Melissa, who is one person you would recommend I get in touch with? And again, remember, the introduction is the new referral because you have social proof already. You can always go on YouTube and see how you can fix up your, your um, LinkedIn profile. But for me to make an introduction is not hard. And for me to use my neural network and come up with the best as the first, that's what I do. So imagine you have, I call it the power of 10. You have 10 great networkers in your life and you ask them to give you the one person. They're going to give you the best. Their brain's going to sort that way. The worst thing you can do is say, who do you know? My brain goes like this. It's like, I can't tell you. But the thinking becomes really tight when you ask for one. Then if you give a feedback loop, hey, Melissa, I went and talked to this person and it was so wonderful. Do you have one other person? Now you've got two. So if you had 10 people, you'd have 20 connections over mm -hmm. the year, over the year, year period. It's, um, it's my most favorite thing. I think besides uh, helping people with books is just to help them see the network. And the other thing you can do in my guidebook, which I just give away because I'm not doing that anymore. I'm doing, except for the, the contest, because I think it will help all the authors to get 10 more best networkers in the world. The whole idea, it's the guidebook for networking. I call it the great exchange. And networking was picked up by Yale University through the Graduate School of Business and also Motorola University. So it's cool. And even though God bless um, Malcolm Gladwell, he never was a practitioner. And I was for 25 years. So that guidebook is yours. It's free if you want it. You just have to email me at Melissa at networking.com or bug Colin so much that I'll send in the link. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for that. 
And uh, David Levine is asking, or he's saying, I recently wrote my first international action thriller. Ooh. Most of my male readers love it and give me good feedback, but I'm not getting much traction with literary agents. Do you have yeah. any suggestions? Well, you already wrote the book. So that's the difficult part. Um, so the person I like to follow is Nick Stevenson. And I would ask him, he's, he's awesome. He's sweet. And just, he's out of England. And I think he may have some direction for you, but you want to get in there. Now, another thing that you can do, the way I found my New York agent, when I was publishing traditionally, I went physically to a writer's digest conference in New York. And there was my agent to be, and it was awesome um, to meet him there. Writer's Digest also has a list of agents. And if your book's already out, it would have to be your next book. Um, but there are agents that are new there, you know, but they come from good um, agencies and they're looking for authors. And so you're hitting them at that intersection where there's opportunity. But the other thing is Writer's Digest, I believe, I, I want to say it's still online, but it also went live where you go to an event and for $25 for 15 minutes, you can talk to at least, I think, five agents and you pitch them. And pretty much they all say, sure, send me something. At least my line is you're seven to 10 times more effective face to face than you are over the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's an opportunity. But Writer's Digest, if you, I would go ahead and subscribe to it, you'll see so many different classes and they'll say, you know, uh, we're going to write the first 10 pages. So, you, you know, the agents get hooked and we're going to teach you how to do that. Um, and they actually look at it. So try that kind of process to get um, start going in, you know, so people get to know you, like you and trust you. Shannon Murray is asking, how does one get over writer's block? Ah. You across working with authors and they're like, Melissa, yeah. I just I, I don't know where to go. I can't seem to come up with. What's next? Yeah. Well, just just call me and I'll give you a free 30 minutes and get you out of it because <laughs> it's, it's right there. But, you know, you just need some help. And again, I'm not I am not trying to pick up another author here um, <laughs> at all. I'm just trying to have people realize their dreams. And and so if I have the time, you may have to wait a little bit or not. I'm happy to help. Awesome. Um, and as far as the type of networking community that you offer or have, yeah. can you talk yeah. about that? If anyone is interested yeah. in joining Melissa's network yeah. of authors, where you were talking about, you guys help support each other with promoting yeah. and networking. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah. So it's a hundred dollars a month. It's the most I'm ever going to charge, I think for marketing. And we have upwards of 22 and growing and they're wonderful. They're just magnificent people. And um, we ended up with, for example, a master sommelier and they're under 300 in the world. And he's on his second book. He's turned out to be an amazing writer. So this is the year where I can grow that circle. If it becomes something where people want more, I can always start another circle of support, but that's, that's where it would go. And I just think it's, it's what I would want somebody to do because my line is until you become so successful. And certainly if you win the lottery, then and give me whatever a million, I would spend it on scholarships for all kinds of people and marketing support and so forth. Cause this is the most fun job ever. And and it, it changes your life, you know, for us to have something where it comes right out of your soul. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to author a book. It definitely is. I felt like, uh, I, I don't have kids, but in a way it felt like I was, I know 
a child out there into the world. Yes, it is your baby. And, and, and it will last, I, you know, with a law degree, I know it will last for a life plus 70 years. So realistically, it's awesome. And another thing that's really cool now are what are called shooks or short books. And so we have a series, it's under 33wayseries.com. So you can look at it and there's a little um, uh, video on there too that explains it, but it's 33 ways not to screw up X. So in, in the book is, uh, these books are only 20,000 words. And so it's a lot of fun to look at a series because Amazon has another layer that's on top of the books that it's almost like um, the double algorithm that gives them a big pop and the books cross sell each other. So, mm. you know, whatever you're interested in, there's a nice setup, a nice opportunity. And it's, it's interesting because I got my husband, you know, <laughs> You know, Craig, he's all over the place. He's so bright and he writes. And now um, he created thrillers and all kinds of different books. Dating for Life was another one. And now he's going to start a podcast hiring top talent. He's in the restaurant equipment area. But I saw that he wanted more satisfaction faster. So a hot area, I think, that will help you improve your skills very quickly would be short stories. And there are a number of books that are winning awards, like having, I'm not sure how many stories are in the book. I do some research on that. But think about it because someone said, I read the other day, a short story is like writing a whole book, only shorter. So you can like build your chops that way, come out with the book um, much faster, and that could get you started. You know, it's like, don't try to do this much, do that much and make it really high quality. You know, like Colin, one day I could see you writing a poetry book or something, you know, sold, you know, touching. It's yeah, I think I think there there are things that, you know, we're I call this a second renaissance. And we are creatives. And, and, you know, when we had the Wonder Museum and it has the big uh, flashing sign and neon sign in there, we are all artists. That's where Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art, is one of the best. And it's feeling yourself as an artist so that you're not, you're not encumbered to, um, you know, have a, a, a negative experience in writing. You want to make it as pleasure, pleasurable as possible. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, when I was going through writing my book, it because it, it does take quite a bit, mm -hmm. I was just blocking my calendar for these two hours, these three hours, I was just going to focus and sit down and turn my phone off. And there were times when I was just like, man, this is never going to end. This is never going to end. This is never going to end. And then I would get a message from you, like, how's it going? Do you need any help? Do you need any support? So if you are interested, anyone out there in getting support in writing your book, uh, I know some people had some questions. I believe Erica did about just even coming up with a topic. So Melissa, I put your email in the chat yeah. here, melissa at networlding.com. Yeah. And uh, if I'm sure it's okay now that it's out there that people contact you if they have questions about how they can get their books written and, and out there. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, again, there are people who have different circumstances, but I would hope that no matter what I could get you moving and, and yeah. that's where it all starts to take off and starts to build. Yeah. I guess um, I'll leave the audience with, um, some advice for me where you just help me tap into my own story and my own journey. And, you know, when people ask like, well, what, what would I write about? Write about what, you know, write about your experience. Mm -hmm. We all have something yeah. think that we've learned from certain experiences in life, whether that's a breakup or being uh, fired from a job or any sort of challenge that we've faced. What have you learned from it? What would you share to your younger self some advice if you were to look back where you're at if you were to talk to your old younger self at 
12 or 15 or 25, what advice would you give them? Boom. That's, that's a topic for a book. So it doesn't, it doesn't take that much to really come up with an idea. Um, and again, if you're interested in help getting more help and support with that, uh, Melissa is the person to help you with that. Thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And everyone, thank you. And look forward to helping where I can. Uh, appreciate it very much. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. Sending you a big hug all the way from Arizona to Chicago. At, at Charleston now. Oh, you're in Charleston now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're moving around. I'm moving around. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, great to see you. And uh, everyone out there, contact Melissa. She'll help you tremendously. Thank Thanks, you. Melissa. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. I'm sure you guys got a lot of great value out of that. Um, I know we could talk for easily another hour about this topic, uh, but she gave us some really good resources uh, with regards to um, how to even just kind of get started and um, just kind of exploring what's out there, some resources for you. One of them, again, is Substack. Um, KDP on Amazon is where we went and published my book. And uh, you can just go on to Amazon and and there's a lot of video, YouTube videos on um, the topic of self-publishing compared to traditional publishing. And the great thing about self-publishing is that um, you just have to get this ISBN number, uh, which is the specific number specific to paperbacks or audiobooks or hardcover. And then once you have those numbers, you can basically essentially um, self-publish onto Amazon KDP. There's another site called Ingram Spark, and they they help uh, push your book out to several different platforms, whether it's Amazon or iBooks or um, some of the other like uh, Goodreads, I believe. And so this is another resource for you. But if you're seriously interested in uh, writing a book, by all means, you've got Melissa's email right now. And uh, if you're interested in writing a screenplay, you can contact me. Just so you know, if you do have a screenplay, some people have asked me, I have a screenplay. How do I get it into in front of producers or studios? Um, there's two resources for you there. One of them is called Tail Flick, T-A-L-E-F-L-I-C-K. And that's where you can submit your script. And they're, they have a process where they read your script. And if it passes their qualifications, they then put it up on their platform for studios and producers to take a look at because they're constantly constantly looking for new content. And then there is another really cool platform called Kino Lime. And Kino Lime, K-I-N-O-L-I-M-E, -E, is a platform where you submit your script and kind of like what Melissa was talking about in terms of a community um, where you're reading each other's books and then uh, submitting reviews and, and uh comments on different platforms, you get to read each other's scripts and then you vote for which is the best script of everyone who has submitted. And then the script that is picked actually gets funded by Kino Lime and turned into a movie. So this is a great opportunity if you are interested in submitting your screenplay um, where the financing is already there and set up uh, to turn your project into an actual movie. As long as you hire me as one of the actors to be in it, uh, kidding, not kidding, but, um, so that's a great resource for you as well. And, uh, as far as having Melissa here tonight, again, uh, I just want to thank her for being here and, uh, graciously giving her time. I love the way she looks at life and talking about instead of being a, uh, uh, publishing partner, she calls it a passion partner. And, uh, and just with regards to, um, creating win-win situations, I've always felt that way with Melissa and uh, no matter um, if it's just a, a brief conversation with her to talk about maybe a topic that you're thinking about writing, or if you're thinking seriously about writing a book with her, she will treat you equally the same and she's incredibly supportive as you can tell and a wealth of knowledge. Uh, so feel free to reach out to her. And uh, with all of that being said, thank you guys for being here. Um, I've got to jump onto my Patreon um, event Patreon is a platform where every month I invite a bunch of people onto our Zoom calls and we do do different events. Um, we're about to do our hour of empower. And this is all in alignment with 
what I'm putting out there in, in terms of supporting people in pursuing their dreams and their goals and providing framework, accountability, inspiration to be able to fulfill on your dreams and everything that matters to you. And especially with the beginning of the year, we all have our resolutions and sometimes we run out of steam when we're wanting to lose weight or if we are thinking about doing a career change or if we're wanting to write a book or start a business or an online course and you're looking if you're looking for some support and some resources and a community of people to connect with this is a great way to get connected and uh, again my inspire course starts January 17th and every other Wednesday for 90 days we are going to be jumping on Zoom from five o'clock Pacific time, eight o'clock Eastern time for a couple of hours. And we're basically going to be, I'm going to be introducing to you some challenges and some accountability with regards to putting uh, some integrity around whatever it is that you want to create for the next 90 days and beyond. So this is going to be an incredible, amazing opportunity for us to all get on Zoom and uh, just support each other. I have a Facebook group set up for that as well. And then that's all leading up to my Inspire Retreat, which is on April 25th through the 29th. And I've rented a beautiful house here in Scottsdale, Arizona for the weekend. And this is going to be a great opportunity where people who um, essentially we had people come in from all over the place in November. And what I do is I provide an opportunity if you are interested in speaking about a certain topic um, to come and actually share essentially like in a TED, TED Talk style uh, environment where you're going to be able to get up in front of the audience that is there. It's roughly going to be about 20 to 30 people and share with the audience whatever it is that you are wanting to speak about to get the experience and the practice of actually doing some speaking. Uh, one of my goals for 2024 is to do a TED Talk myself. And uh, this is something that absolutely scares the crap out of me, but it is definitely something that I'm excited about because anything outside of our comfort zones are the things that are worth it. And this is where a lot of my acting teachers and coaches have pushed me out of my comfort zone and I'm glad they did. And sometimes they've done it, uh, you know, directly or sometimes they've done it indirectly, but I promise you anything worthwhile in life is outside of your, your comfort zone. And sometimes we just need some support and encouragement and sometimes a little kick in the booty to, Go out there and pursue the things that we know light us up, inspire us, and also scare the crap out of us. Um, and if that's something that intrigues you and you are excited about, would love to have you join us for the next Inspire course. Uh, you can check out on my Instagram bio some information. We just did a webinar last night um, that I recorded. You can watch the recording of it. And if you're interested, uh, feel free to uh, email us at info at colineggelsfield.com, and we will answer any of your questions regarding what it looks like. And uh, with that being said, thank you so much for being here and look forward to seeing you again on the next episode of Coffee with Colin. Good night, everyone.